Chapter 6, Section 3, Part A. Enzyme Kinetics as an Approach to Understanding Mechanism. Now we're going to be discussing the kinetics of an enzymatic reaction in this section. What we mean there is as it's shown right here. The rate a reaction occurs at. How many or how long does it take for the enzyme to take a substrate and turn it into a product? Or another way to look at it is within a given amount of time, how many enzymes get, how, what concentration of enzyme gets turned into what concentration of product? If you go and you graph out concentrations on an XY axis, Y axis is the concentration of blank, enzyme substrate, enzyme substrate, product. And along the X, a steady state. This is time. How much time is going on? Well, what we see here is that there is initially a very, I don't know, in my mind, I think it was chaotic time. Enzyme, substrate are in the reaction mix together, in that volume, that area together. And you start to see more substrate act, enter into the active site of the enzyme. And the substrate levels, as you see here, start to go down as more and more of it is less free substrate and more and more associated with an enzyme, ES, as we see going up here. And as more enzyme sub ES gets made, the enzymes, the free enzymes, not bound to a substrate, that level goes down, and the product level starts to go up. There's going to be a certain point where, you know, the enzyme substrate levels, that concentration of ES, is going to plateau. Because as we talked about in Chapter 5, when we we're talking reactions and things bound to, you know, protein bound to ligand, all that stuff. Well, here, this is kind of the same thing. You're never going to have all the protein, all the ligand bound together. You're going to have this plateau effect where it's just, this is as high as it can go. And it's going to be maintained there as long as there's substrate present. This is what is referred to as the steady state. Enzyme E plus S to the ES to the EP to the E plus P. Well, that ES, that EP part, that intermediates, I mean, for every time a product is released, another substrate enters in, so it's pretty much indistinguishable. That's this steady state. Chaotic up here, pretty much just running along, humming along right there. That steady state point. We can actually learn more at the initial time during that chaotic, as I thought, where enzymes and substrate are finally starting to come into contact with each other. This initial rate, the initial velocity, they call this V naught. At time zero, when everything is introduced together, for a certain amount of time before it starts to bend over and become the steady state, as you see here. If you are a draw, just extrapolate out a line before it begins to bend and curve over. The slope of that line, V naught. Why do we say that? Well, because right in here, S is regarded as constant. And as you go and you begin, we see this increasing rate, but it starts at zero. It starts there and then it goes and then it begins quickly to do. As we saw in chapter five with the protein ligand binding, you're never going to reach one. You're never going to have all the protein, all the spots on the protein bound by ligand. 
Same thing here. You're never going to hit that theoretical 100% where it is VMAX. You're going to approach it. You're going to come really close to it. But as we see here, it's never going to quite be there. So at this plateau, V naught is almost V max. Almost. Never equal. It's going to come close to, you know, V max being here is the maximum rate possible of every active site immediately binds S and upon releasing P immediately binds another. The Michaelis Menten equation is a means of quantitatively describing the activity of an enzyme. E plus S intermediate Yes. Okay. You see, we have again another K. K1 means you're going in this direction. K minus one, you're reversing it. Because remember, everything an enzyme does, it can also reverse under the correct conditions. K2, ES, DEP. K minus two, there you go. Turns out K2 is limited right there by how much ES is there. Not enough ES, you're not gonna get enough, you know, K2 occurring, which means you're not gonna get enough product. So there's our rate limiting for a lot of things. Now, if you remember in chapter five, we had the Y equals, and then we had that half of that equals the KM. Well, again, we see it. Half of VMAX, remember VMAX being our theoretical, here's the maximum we could ever get under perfect conditions, only under theory. Half of that, is what KM is. So via, as it says right here, Vmax observed when virtually all enzyme present is in an ES complex. Not gonna happen, but you're gonna get really, really close. But you're gonna get to that point though, where you're approaching it, and no matter how much more substrate you keep adding, it just isn't gonna get any higher. It's just not going to get any closer. V naught, our initial. V max, our theoretical maximum, times the substrate. Divided by KM. Remember, that's, you know, the V, you know, that is half the Vmax plus whatever substrate was there. The KM also can be referred to as the Michaelis constant. Okay. V naught equals Vmax times the concentration of S divided by KM plus S. All right. How do we get there? Hmm. Everything here, V0, Vmax, S, and the KM. Can all measure these experimentally. Okay, these are not theoretical numbers, you know, derived from, you know, the rainbows out of a unicorn's ass, any of that type of stuff. These are actual measurements. So how do we get there? 
e plus s k1 k minus 1 e to the s es k2 e plus p okay if you want to look at it from the term of es okay our product is actually derived from whatever es is there the formation of es is going to be based on v naught so michaelis and them they figured out that v naught equals k2 whoops if you think back you look up here k2 breakdown of ES. So what's the rate there? The rate of? <sighs> Can't measure ES actually. Okay, that's just one of those things. We One, it's so fast. And two, how do you measure substrate protein bound substrate? You know, that's not it's one of those things. It's like quantum physics. The moment you go and you try to measure it, well, you perturb the system. You disturb what is going on. So you throw everything out of whack. Well, we know E, T, e, e this total enzyme there. What's bound, what's unbound, all of that. If we know the total, and we theoretically know this, then we kind of know what's free. Or backwards, we know the first two, and we can calculate theoretical ES. Somebody sat down and figured out. K1, where we go from E plus S to ES, is a factor of total enzyme minus that theoretical ES that we can't actually do times the concentration of S. The reverse of that, ES, enzyme and substrate, plus K2 times ES. Hmm. We're making assumptions here. We're making assumptions that the formation of ES has now hit this point where for every enzyme substrate ES Form, there's an enzyme product disassociating and then that ends free enzymes reassociating so we got this balance going on k1 times total minus es times s is the sum of those two halves e plus s to es es k2 to e plus p the two halves of that equation Go through, do the math, substitute in here, there, everywhere, and then you end up with this. The K less constant, the KM. Remember, that's half. Well, that's you know the measuring at half the V max. Here's the velocity at half the V max. Which we can, you know. K minus 1 plus K2, because remember that's K minus 1 is going ES back to E plus S, or K2 ES to the E plus P, all divided by K1, which is the reaction of going E plus S to the ES. Okay. Our equation then. The formation of ES equals total enzyme times the substrate divided by 
the reaction rates plus S, total substrate. All right. Everything you're starting with, ET plus S, divided by reaction rates. And, and you have to take into account how much substrate is actually there. Because remember, little substrate, low substrate, high substrate will all make a difference. So we go back to our V naught. V naught equals K2 times ES. V naught, K2, ES, blah, blah, blah. But the thing is, what this isn't, this is almost as if the more substrate you add, the more ES you can have, and it's just infinitely linear. We have to take into account that there's going to be a plateau. So we have to factor in Vmax. Vmax is K2 times the total enzyme. How and why? I don't know. But somebody calculated this out. Somebody figured this out. Somebody much smarter than me. So this K2 times the total enzyme, that's our Vmax. That's equivalent to Vmax, to the total theoretical maximum you can get for that enzyme. Vmax times the total concentration of S divided by the reaction rate, Km, plus the total concentration of S. Now, what if we go to the Km when half the Vmax, when half, when V naught is half Vmax, Km is equivalent to concentration of S. Here's where things get interesting. Here's where things, the up and down, going up and down in concentration of S will have an effect on overall reaction rate. If you're well above this point, you're going to saturate. You're well below this point, you're not going to be running at optimal. Concentration of S along the X, V naught, micromoles per minute, our reaction rate along the Y. Half of Vmax, go over, down. That's Km. Km is a concentration of S when you're at Vmax. K1 plus K, uh, divide member, that's a whole K, it's divided by times K, divided by K, to all that. The initial here, before it begins to bend, this if you were to extrapolate this out as a straight linear line instead of the curving over as a hyperbola, that's V naught, V max times the concentration of S divided by Km. Because remember here, concentration of S has the maximum impact on reaction rate. V max being our theoretical maximum. You'll approach, but you'll never actually get there.